Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, um, it's a great pleasure to follow the um, Honourable Gentleman uh, and also my Honourable Friend, the Member for um, Wickham. Let me just, um, in my interventions on the Secretary of State, I, I made the sort of synopsis of the argument I want to make about why Parliament should be involved, but I've got some very um, specific examples. Now, my own view is I, I still think it perhaps would have been wiser if the Government had stuck to uh, guidance as opposed to putting every single one of the rules into law, partly because we could then have acted faster um, and there wouldn't have been the same issues about putting things into the criminal law, but secondly because we could have kept the language much more straightforward and simpler and I think some of the complexity that is inevitable when you legislate is part of the reason why citizens actually find quite a lot of this difficult to follow. But anyway, the government's made that decision, we're putting things into the law, but that does mean when you're legislating, it's important that this House scrutinises the government. And I'll give two reasons, um, Madam Deputy Speaker, that I alluded to in my interventions. One is about evidence, about what works and what scenarios we're facing. And the second one is about the detail of the law. Now, the first one on evidence, I'll give an example from last week. Um, my uh, Ronald Moore Friend, the member for New Forest West, um, set out his views about the Chief Medical Officer and the Chief Scientific Advisor. Now, I don't share those views, but last Monday when they did their press conference and they set out their views about the doubling time of this virus, um, they, they said that they thought, uh, Sir Patrick Vance, the Chief Scientific Advisor, said he thought that the epidemic was doubling roughly every seven days. It could be a little bit longer, maybe a little shorter, but let's say roughly ev every seven days. That was the um, underpinning of, of the, the graph of doom, I think my right honourable friend called it, and it's been called widely, which set the tone for last week. But when the Prime Minister came to this House on Tuesday, that, that would be the day after the um, evidence was presented at the press conference, a press conference at which there were no questions permitted, the Prime Minister said that the day before the CSA and the CMO had said that the doubling rate was somewhere between seven and 20 days. Now, those are really quite dramatic differences. The difference between 10,000 cases by the middle of October or 50,000. Now, I don't know which of those two scenarios is correct, but the point is they're not the same. And the reason why ministers should have to come to the House is so that we can interrogate ministers on the evidence, understand the problem facing us, and also understand the efficacy of the solutions. The second thing is on the regulations. Now, on the regulations that came into force at midnight last night, that were only published, uh, that were only made at five o'clock yesterday, there are some very serious powers in these regulations that were not in the statements made to Parliament last week. Uh, now, for the avoidance of doubt, I broadly support these measures because they're about making sure people self-isolate when they're either uh, when they either test positive or when they're a contact. But there are powers in here or duties in here that are put on employers uh, which create criminal offences both for the company and for individual managers in those companies. Now, I don't know how many businesses in this country are aware of the fact these duties have now just landed on them. I, I would hazard very few. There are also measures in here which give the power of using reasonable force to enforce self-isolation, not just to police officers and PCSOs, but also to any individual appointed so by the Secretary of State and also employees of local authorities, supposedly these Covid marshals. Now, that raises issues about who can use reasonable force, what training they have to use it in a safe manner, and also, given they are by definition using reasonable force on someone who is very likely to have coronavirus, how they exercise the reasonable force in a way that is safe for them, and do they have proper training? Now, these are all questions which no one in this House has been able to ask a minister because these regulations came into force last night um, and I have no idea, they have to be debated within 28 days, um, but, but that, you know, that could be a month away after they've been amended several times as we've seen already. Now I just don't think in a democracy that is the right way to make the criminal law with important sanctions. They were announced last week and as my honourable friend the member for Wickham said, I don't buy that there was no time between last week and this week they couldn't have been debated. When government wants to, it can change the business of this House rapidly and it can even arrange for this House to sit 
rapidly, and I would urge ministers to make those steps to make sure these laws are better scrutinised.